Once again, those marionettes are up on the high wire. They're even more daring than those you see at the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. The music is um, descriptive in the composition and features the artist uh, by Keita Carroll, who is an artist, composer, winning composer. You might um, recognize him from the fact that uh, he composed the score for the 2001 production of the Oedipus Plays, directed by Michael Kahn, starring Avery Brooks. And that received three Helen Hayes Award nominations. By Keita Carroll comes to Minnesota on September 13th and 14th, and he'll be a part of a new series curated by Anthony Cox, the world-renowned bassist. It's jazz plus spoken word, and... Uh, I know that in a busy life on a Saturday night, the capture by Keita is uh, just very important because we look to his arrival next Friday and Saturday at the Hennepin Theater of the Arts. I'd like you to meet him now. Good to have you there. Good to be here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, I know you've come from a rehearsal and you want a chance to sort of unwind, and uh, we'll give you that opportunity right now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now, your your life in music began really in St. Louis, didn't it? Yes, it did. And I remember you telling me that at age 16, you were in that famous George Hudson band in St. Louis. Well, I wasn't in it. I played with them. We were playing, uh, I played in a high school all-city jazz band. And we rehearsed at the Musicians' Union. And George Hudson and the members of his band used to come in along with other musicians and listen to us, you know, the youngsters. And my high school band director directed that our, our ensemble. And it had people like Lester Bowie and James Jabberware and J.D. Perrin. And um, Oliver Nelson actually would come by also, and he would uh, give charts to us to play. And and a couple of times, George Hudson came through looking for a trumpet player to fill in. And uh, I did it a few times. So it was great. What an exciting uh, learning experience under those uh, uh, directions. You know what? Yes. There is uh, a um, I hear fire it. department right next door. <laughs> and oh. of course, it would come on right now. It's three alarms. It goes can, on for a couple you? of minutes. Well, we hope it's nothing serious. No, no. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you want to do. Well, I'll tell you what. You want to play a song or something? Well, <laughs> let's see how it goes here for a moment. Uh, yeah. I know that um, we're coming... I thought for a moment you were under a strong emergency. <laughs> and, and we're not sure of that in New York at any rate, because the sirens go at any time, don't they? It's always on that verge, you know, but... May we do this. Um, may we call you back... After 9 o'clock uh, and 10 o'clock your time? Of course. Very good. And keep safe there, will you? <laughs> okay. Sorry about this. Oh, listen. We can't control. That's <laughs> New York. Yeah, I just had the windows open, too. I, I could get up and close the windows, but it very seldom happens, but here we are. Well, okay. it adds a Murphy little excitement to... Murphy has the room. <laughs> we'll catch up with you uh, after 10 o'clock uh, Central Time. Okay. Uh, or 10 o'clock Eastern Time, 9 o'clock our time. Okay, then. Well, you keep safe there. I will do. I'm talking with Bikeda Carroll from New York City, and New York's life, day or night, is full of sirens. Once again, we're going to send out a call and uh, introduce you to Baikita Carroll. He will be one of the lead guests in the Illusion Theater's new Jazz Plus Spoken Word series, curated by Anthony Cox, and it premieres 
next Friday and Saturday, September 13th and 14th. Well, I'm glad you're safe, Baikita. Our, our conversation was somewhat interrupted. I'm very sorry about that, but I'm safe. Everything's cool. Well, that's good, and that's cool, I'll yeah. say. Well, you know, I, as I look at uh, your remarkable experiences as composer and musician, and trumpet and flugelhorn is yours, um, and those marionettes that have been dancing around during our interviews with Anthony as well as your, uh, your segment, uh, intrigue me. Tell me about the muse and how you go about composing, or can you even uh, describe it? Um, yeah, that's a hard one because uh, I've been doing it for a while, and each writing situation kind of is born of itself, you know. Um, I try not to use tech, um, uh, any prescribed um, technique, you know. Well, you you, uh, you, you know, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me, you you compose for theater, dance, TV, film, and concerts, so, exactly. wow. Exactly. That's yeah. music to specification, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and each, each um, discipline um, requires its own, you know, palette to pull from, so I try not to get pigeonholed into one way of writing or one style of writing. You know, and try to address each situation for what it was needed, as opposed to what I think it should be. You know, is there any way of describing, say, the palette for um, live theater, as opposed to dance or TV or film or or vice versa? Well, live theater, you know, the impetus is always the the score. I mean, the um, excuse me, the uh, script, and uh, everything comes everything comes out of that. So you have to follow the the emotional curve of the storyline, and you know it. The music comes out of that, and it can't be too dynamic because it will overpower the flow of the play itself. So there's a way of writing for that, you know. Whereas if you're writing for dance, then there's no dialogue, nothing to get in the way, and you have a more freedom of expression. In writing for dance, or dancers or you know, choreographers. Uh, if you're writing for a, a jazz ensemble or, some, or a situation like that, then the impetus is basically for improvisation and setting up environments that uh, enhance or inspire the soloist to move to the next point. So each one requires a different, you know, mindset, pin. Uh, in your own group, and uh, there are people like Steve Colson and mm -hmm. Mike Formanek, is it? And uh, each of them are a very special kind of individual. Uh, is there any way of describing how you might say, write as you think about this, uh, the drums, Cleaver, uh, the piano, Colson, uh, the bass, uh, Formanek, and uh, the tenor is Lindsay, and you're the trumpet and... There you are. Well, that band, um, I don't know, it's, it's governed primarily by contrapuntal considerations, you know. I mean, the form of the music derives from contrapuntal considerations. And I really like the musicianships, first and foremost, with that, with that particular combination of people because I can go, I can take any direction and feel comfortable, you know, and no one's set aback by some obscure music that I'm bringing into, you know, play. Uh, so I can take things from um, Egyptian forms or, or, or scales and, you know, and everyone in the band is, is very um, adept, you know, at, uh, or should it's an adept, adept at um, different forms, you know. So that's what I really like about that band. And then, you know, also they're all very emotional players, they're very technical, but emotional players. So I, um, it tends to give me a freedom to go in any direction that I feel for that particular period of writing that I'm involved in. That's why I can take things from different plays that I've been working 
and uh, rearrange something, and those particular musicians are, you know, primed and ready <laughs> to a- attack or handle, you know, new forms. I'm thinking of uh, s- someone totally different from you, historic figure. His orchestra was a kind of lab or chamber orchestra, and that's Edward Kennedy Ellington. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And there, there, he certainly had people to write for, didn't he? Yes, yes. And and they in turn gave back uh, something. It's kind. Of, it's a continuum, you know. It's like it's, it's very circular. You know, you give, you take. They give, they take, and it becomes a form, a life form. Is that true of your quintet? I I try. Lord knows I try. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have a chance yep. to see. Uh, you, the, the challenge, I guess, in the uh, in the Illusion Theater's new series, Jazz Plus Spoken Word, mm-hmm. that probably involves collaboration with poets, narrators, and will you have a hand in that? When I get there, I'm going to sit down with the poets, and we're going to try to we'll put together, you know, um, uh, a presentation. They have been listening to the music, and uh, I've been talking to Anthony, and we're, we're, it should be nice. I'm excited about. It. I work with. I just did a concert this past Saturday with a poet, just uh, trumpet and poetry. So I, I'm, I love working, you know, with poets. It's a little hard with them. Um, trumpet because the timber is in the same range, you know, depending on who I'm working with. But most of the time that, that the rhythm and the timber of the trumpet is in the same range as the port, so you have to find your holes to fill in a different manner as, say, lyrics, where it's like a four-bar phrase or a two-bar phrase and you fill in the middle, whereas poetry is not as symmetrical, so it, it creates another challenge, but um, I enjoy it. I like writing, you know, uh, just written music for poetry as well. But I like improvising with it, you know. So it should be fun. I, I'm, I'll probably sit down with them on Friday evening. Uh, no, Thursday. I get in Thursday. And we'll um, come up with something. I'm talking with Baikita Carroll, and uh, it's all a part of the new Illusion Theater premiere series, Jazz Plus Spoken Word, which opens on Friday the 13th and uh, plays on Saturday night the 14th at the Hennepin Arts Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, it sounds like a great adventure and a new series in the arts for Minnesota, Minneapolis, and St. Paul. And I want to thank you, Baikita Carroll, Mm -hmm. for hanging in there with us, plus an emergency call that left you in safety anyway (laughs) and uh, we look forward to meeting you along the line once again it will be a pleasure thanks very much thank you thank you for having me oh pleasure sir all right great to hear your your approach to how you put this all together (laughs) (laughs) good night good night